Out of the 7 billion people on this planet, Jeff Bezos is the richest man out of all of them. And whether or not you believe that that's a worthwhile goal, anyone who's achieved something that grand can teach you two things. First of all, how to see the world very clearly, how to cut through society's delusional way of thinking and really see the world the way it actually works. And second of all, be able to navigate that world and get things that most people don't even think are possible. So in this video, we are going to be analyzing a long interview by Jeff Bezos. The original video is over an hour long, but we're going to be condensing down the main parts. And the funny thing is, this interview only got a few thousand views, but it contains so many hidden gems that will let you see the world more clearly and be able to navigate that world to get more of the things that you want and less of the things that you don't want. So let's start by going over some of the underlying fundamental concepts that frame this whole video that Jeff Bezos believes in and then we'll talk about more about how I take these concepts and applied it to my own life through a morning routine which I've been doing for the past 28 days. And then at the end of the video, we'll talk about whether it was worth it, whether it affected me at all, and how you can start applying some of these concepts. And if you do enjoy this video at any point, feel free to click the like button. But let's start with how Jeff Bezos doesn't associate his identity with external things. I said, look, when the stock is up 30% in a month, don't feel 30% smarter. Because when the stock is down 30% in a month, it's not gonna feel so good to be, feel 30% dumber. The point he's making is that in life, there are some things that you can control and there are other things that you can't control. And even if you're doing the best of your ability in everything that you can control, there will be points where things will not be going your way. For example, this is something I have to constantly remind myself with YouTube. If I create a video that I feel is amazing, which is something that's under my control, but it doesn't do well, then one of two things can happen. First of all, I can associate that negative amount of views or that small amount of views with me and how good I am at making videos, which is gonna discourage me. Or I can focus on what I can control and ask myself, did I make this video to the best of my ability? Focus on that and then I'm gonna get encouraged because I'm getting better at creating videos. So don't get caught up on things that you can't control. Constantly ask yourself the question, is this something that I can control? And focus on that. Which leads me perfectly onto Jeff's next point. So you know the great uh, quote that Warren Buffett brings up all the time, but Benjamin Graham said, in the short run, the stock market is a voting machine. In the long run, it's a weighing machine. And what you need to do is operate your company in such a way, knowing that it will be weighed one day. So what he's meaning here is that the stock market is based on people's perception of the value of your business, which means that the stocks will change based on people's perceptions. But in the long run, your business is valued on the value it brings to the end consumer, not any perceptions. And to really drill this point home, ever since I heard Jeff talking about this, I've been asking myself the question, how can I make my procrastination program better for the end consumer? And if I focus relentlessly on that, bring more value to them, I know in the long run, even if that sometimes requires short-term sacrifice, that's gonna give a lot of long-term benefit. Now, you can apply this to your life by reminding yourself that even if you're doing all that you can, the best of your ability, you're really trying to improve yourself, but things aren't going the way you want them to, remind yourself that if you keep taking positive actions, in the long run, positive things will come back to you there may be some fluctuation between the things you're doing now and the results you're experiencing, but trust that in the long run, everything will balance out and you'll get what you deserve because that's just the way the world works. So have faith in that fact, don't get discouraged and keep doing the best of your ability in the things that you can control. And this next clip is kind of different to the previous two. You know, you, on your, with your loved ones, you, you, you bet on them. You're not betting on the idea, you're, you're, you, you are betting on the person I just really like that, so I wanted to include it here. Next up is how Jeff Bezos makes decisions. Uh, that, and it's one of those decisions I made with my heart and not my head. And I basically said, I don't want to regret, I don't, when I'm 80, now 90, I, I want to have minimized the number of regrets that I have in my life. And most of our regrets right. are acts of omission. They're things we didn't try. It's the path untraveled. Um, those are the things that haunt us. Put basically, when you're confronted with a decision, ask yourself the question, which option am I going to regret the least? And then go with that one. I actually used this mental model myself when I was deciding whether or not to drop out of university. 
And when I asked myself the question, which option am I going to regret more, then it was very obvious to me. I dropped out of uni. This happened a couple weeks ago. And I really like this mental model because regret is one of those things that once it's done, once you regret something, you can't really change it because the thing you regret is in the past. So by trying to live a life minimizing regrets, you're living life through a lens that allows you to live a life that you're proud of. Now that we have some of those underlying concepts that frame the actionable advice, let's move on to Jeff Bezos's morning routine. Starting with, when does he wake up? Many, so I, I like to putter in the morning. I get up early, I go to bed early, I get up early. I like to putter in the mornings. Okay, and what does he do in the morning? So I like to read the newspaper, I like to have coffee, I like to have uh, breakfast with my kids before they go to school. So I have my um, kind of puttering time is very important to me. And also this. And so that's why I set my first meeting for 10 o'clock. And how crazy is that? The richest man alive can find time in his mornings to relax and actually enjoy his life. It shows that the excuse of I don't have enough time is completely invalid. Find ways to optimize, to systemize, to delegate your time so that you have more free time. And I think he does this puttering for three different reasons. First of all, short-term relaxation is actually long-term productive. By taking time in the mornings to relax, you're actually going to increase your productivity throughout the day because you start your day proactively deciding what you do instead of reactingly responding to everything and going ahead and getting crazily caught up in the flow of life. Second of all, it's scientifically proven that doing meaningless, menial tasks, especially in the morning, is more likely to open your brain up for creativity. Stuff like walking or doing the dishes or even making pancakes, which Jeff Bezos does quite a lot. And third of all, puttering is good because it's a reminder to enjoy the process. And the argument for this can be made very simply. In life, we've got goals and goals are good. But you've got to remember that there's a chance that you're not going to reach those goals. So with that in mind, you've got to make sure that you're enjoying the process. Because if you're not enjoying the process and you don't reach that goal, that's a lot of time wasted. Whereas if you can enjoy the process and whether or not you reach the goal doesn't matter because you're enjoying the process. Okay, so when does he start work? I like to do my high IQ meetings before lunch. Like anything that's going to be really mentally challenging, that's a 10 o'clock meeting. And because by 5 p.m., I'm like, I can't think about that today. Let's try this again tomorrow at 10 a.m. And this is important because of something called decision fatigue. Put very simply, the more decisions you make, the worse those decisions are going to be. So make sure the important decisions are made first so that they can be your best decisions. And what does he do when he starts that work? As a senior executive, you get paid to make a small number of high quality decisions. Your, your job is not to make thousands of decisions every day. And whilst most of us don't have a job title like this, it still can be applied to your life because you can live a better life by doing less. And, and as crazy as that sounds, it's completely true. It's why I only focus on my YouTube channel, my email list, and my procrastination program. You're not gonna find me on Instagram, Snapchat, all of those, Facebook, all of those kinds of other things. Stay focused and you're gonna actually be able to move the needle. So spend a lot of time thinking, and I think this is a really good way to live life, thinking about what are the things that are important to you? What are the things that actually move the needle? And once you find those two, three, four, five activities, execute on them relentlessly and try and just cut out the rest as much as you humanly can. So having applied all of these concepts to my life for the past 28 days, and especially this specific morning routine, what's happened? Have I noticed any change? The answer is yes, one specific change. By slowing down and relaxing in the morning, I've actually found that I've been happier and I've actually got more done. By doing less, I've been able to get more done. And the reason for that is because I'm able to proactively get more specific on the tasks that are actually going to move the needle forwards. I cut out the junk before I take time to relax and enjoy the process. I found that when I'm in a better mood, I get better work done. And I think it comes down to the quote that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. By taking things slowly, I have a smooth morning where I feel in control, I feel happy, I feel relaxed. And by having a smooth morning, in the end result is smooth is fast. So if able to get more done. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure you click the like button. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And finally, if you're interested in the procrastination program, go to andrewkirby.net slash apply. I'm deeply grateful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.